GM. <laughs> okay. Now, Martin's ELO rating, I think he said in the chat, is 2,070. So, like I say, that's good. That's over 2,000. I'm, I expect that's much higher than, not. no offence to anyone in the chat, but most of you out there, I expect so. So, what am I going to play? Well, I've just done a course in the Black Lion, but the Black Lion is normally against E4. So, to keep this as educational as I can, I'm going to go either 4 the Dutch, which I normally nearly always do, or I'm going to go for the King's Indian defense because I play a lot. I play a lot of that. Now I think I'm going to go knight to f6 because I normally do the Dutch. Let's try and do something. I I can remember I did this opening against Martin once before actually, in in actually a, a long play game. I think I actually had this as black against him. But now, okay, I said that, but I'm going to go for the Budapest Gambit. Boom, like a shot. Now. This is a very interesting gambit, um, and I won't be able to keep an eye as much on the chat, by the way. So if I do miss any of you resubbing, thank you, Haspario, or anything like that, I apologise. You know, there's a lot going on. Uh, so I do apologise in advance. I, I always like thanking you if you sub or just for being there, like Neat has done today, like Haspario, like HL did. So thank you very much. So, yeah, so the Budapest gambit. I've, I actually just did a DVD on this, and I, I started studying it a bit, but the problem is, after d4, knight to f6, and I'll go over the game again afterwards, you have to, you can only play the Budapest Gambit if white plays c4 and move 2, which, which a lot of players do play, and this is the Budapest Gambit, and this is a lot of fun. So, um, Martin knows his gambits, he does indeed, well Martin... Martin is a gambit player himself. Um, he loves gambits. He loves exciting games. A very interesting player. Martin plays the grob in real games. Respect to Martin. He, he's, a, he's, a, he's a maverick. Now, the Budapest is where you move the knight to g4. The other option is moving the knight to e4, which is a more risky gambit. But I've been studying knight g4 uh, myself in the most detail recently. And this is the Budapest Gambit. So, so what is Black trying to do? Well, well, Black is maybe just going to win the pawn back. So it won't be a Gambit anymore. And Martin has now played the best move, Bishop to F4. Uh, I can't remember the names of the variations, but I'll, I'll, I'll give you a little lesson in the Budapest after we finish this game. So if you want to learn this opening as well, I'll give you like a 10 minute lesson on it afterwards with what I've picked up recently. Um, and... The idea for black really is you get very quick peace play. So your knights and your bishop and often your queen come flying out very quickly. Now one main move here is g5, believe it or not. But in, in my studies of this opening, I, I came to the conclusion that g5 was too risky, opens the king too much. And I, and I came to the conclusion that knight to c6 was the best move. And I spent a lot of time on the various lines and, and I thought this move knight to c6 gives quite decent compensation. Martin has gone knight to f3 to, to simply guard this pawn. And now bishop to b4 check is the main line. Again, I'm going for quick development. Um, and the point of going bishop to b4 check, uh, thank you for the bits as well, Anit, very, very generous, is that the queen can now come to e7. And I can take this pawn back here. So Martin had two ways to play in that position. He could have gone knight c3. And I think knight to c3 is more critical. But the move that Martin played, knight to d2. And I'm trying to remember my uh, my my uh, my theory as I'm speaking. Because I, well, I, I filmed this DVD for chess space. It was about four months ago. So, you know, it, to get the juices flowing and remember the lines will take me a while. Uh, and now um, the main line here is queen to e7. And you can see, like I said, I'm playing with my pieces. And Martin can't defend this pawn on e5 anymore. So I'm going to win my pawn back. But knight d2 is meant to be, a lot of people say it's slightly better for white because I often have to give up my bishop on b4. Now there's a very fun line here. It looks like my bishop's on pre. Um, and now I'm going to go knight takes e5 now oh no he can take my bishop oh no i've lost the bishop what happens if he takes my bishop now 
Uh, and I don't, I can't remember which night I should take with. Should I have taken with that night, or should I have taken with that night? I don't know. But taking taking with the knight on on g4 looks natural. But oh no, have I just blundered a bishop? Have I? Have I just blundered a bishop? What happens if he takes the bishop? It's not knight takes f3. No, it's not knight takes f3. What 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 one is it? It is okay. So he gets rid of one knight. Oh no, he can still take my bishop because I can't go knight takes f3 anymore. Of course, of course, it is knight to d3 checkmate. Boom! <laughs> now Martin's too good to fall for that. So pawn takes bishop, knight d3. What a, what a beautiful trick that is. So he goes e3. So now he defends this one with his bishop. Now there are two ways uh, you can play this position. Um, the traditional way of playing this position is bishop takes d2. Uh, and this, this way is... Um, uh, a, a, an okay way to play but there's also a very interesting way of playing with bishop c5 but i'm just trying to remember the lines there now bishop c5 b4 you go bishop d4 uh is the crazy crazy line and if he takes on d4 we have knight to f3 double checkmate but of course he won't fall for that so bishop here i'm trying to remember the lines so you know what, what will he do in that position well if he goes bishop there how do I play this? Uh, I can, so I don't want to, okay, I don't want to lose my piece. Bishop takes d2, I put in the DVD, is actually being okay, absolutely okay, because we can go d6 and b6, and Spielman came up with an idea of the bishop going here, which is all right, but bishop c5 is such a fascinating idea, I don't know if, if I can uh, avoid playing it in this position for my sins. So we're going to go here, and this is probably one of the first times I played the Budapest, so I really am risking. I really am risking things quite a lot by playing this gambit. I'm not so used to playing it. Whenever you learn any new opening, I recommend before you're playing a tournament, you play loads of games at this time limit to get used to it. Even though you've read the book, brought the DVD, brought the course, there's nothing like learning by practicing it yourself. You can learn stuff by reading. Or maybe you prefer looking at it in video format. I think video format now is the great way. You're watching this. Like, you know, that's that's why I create DVDs from my company, Ginger Gym. Courses for Chessable and DVDs for chess base. Because I find they're a very easy way to learn. But even when you've watched the DVD, you've got to go play the system. Yeah, go and play it. Go and play it. You know, because otherwise, you, you know, you're not, you're not really going to, you're never going to learn it unless you try it out. Because it puts everything you've learned you have to recall the information like anything teaching in teaching it's one thing learning something in a classroom but there's another thing putting it into practice and when it's when you put it into practice that's when you really learn it um i mean i think about uh i think about like uh, um when i was at school and you know all, i mean i was pretty good at maths it's a bit everyone says chess players are good at maths i don't think that's true at all but i was pretty good at maths uh, i was pretty very well very good i'd say uh, but now i can't remember anything <laughs> I, I can't remember anything to do with maths whatsoever literally ask me anything i can't even remember Pythagor pythagoras's theory you know uh nowadays it's just like because i haven't used them at all so i, I can't remember them mm. Your five card draw, you've got to you've got to play it. It's very scary playing in your opening. But you got just give it a go. Give it a go online. Okay, so this is the line I'm talking about, and this is where this is this is a new idea I had when I was creating this last DVD. This is a main line, and now this is my idea. Bloody risky, you may say so. But what happens if he takes my bishop? Boom! There's two ways to check mating. Can you believe it? If he takes my bishop, he opens up his king. So this is this is my little one of my opening ideas, and I can go knight d3 checkmate, or knight f3 checkmate. So just just you know, and that would definitely be putting it into Martin's pipe, with my knight sliding into one of these two squares. Now I have to say my idea. This wasn't my idea. I, I don't want to take credit where I'm not the person who originally came up with this idea at all it was actually a guy um i think timothy taylor i found a book uh I, when i whenever i create any course anything i do a lot of research i buy all the books on that opening 
I'll make sure I read them all and look at anything else. So I make sure I do my research. And it was Timothy Taylor who came up with this idea, not me. So I can't, I, I certainly can't take credit for it. Okay, so he had to move his rook. And now I'm wondering, do I play knight g6, which looks like a good idea? Uh, why have I gone blurry? That's weird, isn't it? I've gone blurry all of a sudden. Why does my, my cameras, I've got this expensive camera and it's shit. <laughs> Okay, I could go knight to g6, because uh, then my bishop comes back here. But I, 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 can I keep my bishop there a bit longer? Can I go d6 first with the idea of bringing my bishop to... Okay, let's have a look. That's what I want to play. I want to play d6. Now, if Martin moves his knight, I will go bishop c3 check. Now, what if he goes bishop to this square don't want to lose my bishop my bishop is is is, is very dangerously placed i'm trying to remember the theory this is safe this is safe but uh, you know i want to get my bishop on c out and they get c c out c8 out so can i go d6 let's have a look then he goes bishop to uh this square and then i can always then go knight here correct yes correct so i think d6 is safe We've got quite a funky position, correct? Remember, he can't take my bishop because my knight moves with checkmate. So I'm going to go here with the idea that my bishop is immune and it can come back here later on. And I'm going to try to get my bishop to one of these two squares with tempo. And I've got knight g6 and bishop f6 to get out of trouble. I don't know why it's gone blurry. Let me just let me just remove the camera and put it back on. It annoys me when these things happen, you know, just little things. Is it become a perfectionist? I, I, well, I, I wouldn't say a perfectionist, but uh, you're going to see my you're going to see actually what my studio looks like now is, you know, with the green, the green there. OK, there you go. The green screen. See, I'm not actually in Aztec world or whatever it is, but we will we'll try to try to get that back. I'm not going to mess around. I, I end up messing around the camera for ages yesterday it, during the stream. And it, and it got on my nerves. So if I go blurry again, uh, I'll just have to remain blurry uh, for today. Okay, that, that's a bit better. Okay, so he's now gone bishop here. So Martin's playing very sensible. And now if I go bishop c3, um, I'm going to have to take that knight on, on d2 then. And I don't see why I've done this maneuver of bringing my bishop like this when I could have taken the knight in one move. That doesn't make any sense. He's not friendly to take my bishop at the moment, but after he castles, he certainly will be. So I could now, could I now play bishop to f5 first? If he takes, I go check, and then I take here. That looks a bit risky playing here. Can I do this though? Bishop here, and where does he move his rook? There's something a bit risky about this move. I've got to be careful. If I move the bishop there, now, can he? He can't take my bishop. What if he castles? Okay, so bishop f5, castles, bishop takes b1. And then my bishop are, is looking very trapped to me. It's a risky move playing the bishop here. And I'd like to have this prepared beforehand. So let's have a look. Bishop here. So try to follow me. Bishop here, castles. Bishop takes b1. And then he's got three moves. Queen, knight, or pawn takes. If he goes pawn takes there, he's attacking my knight, he's attacking my bishop. But my knight can then go back to g6. And, oh, it's very, it's very, it's something a bit iffy about it. You know, when you have a smell, sometimes a smell, uh, uh, something very funny. I don't know. Uh, bishop here, castles, takes. I don't like it. I just don't like it for some reason. Oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go knight g6. There's something... I w I'm going to check this after the game, see if I could have played that immediately, because if I could have played it immediately, I kind of like to, because then I can track his bishop with uh, bishop b2, his his rook, and maybe it's, maybe it's even nearly winning for me. Is it nearly, was it being nearly, I don't know, but I mean, it also, there's something about it that I seem to recall that my bishop, one of my bishops might get trapped. And I, I don't really want to risk it, and I'm being a bit lazy. You should never be lazy in a real game. But as I'm spending so long with my time. And, and now the point of my play is my bishop stays on the board. And I'm going to move it back here. Maybe bishop b5 was better. Trying to swap bishops. But I've kept my bishop on the board. And if you see earlier on after uh, in the opening. 
uh, in this position here, what the main line is to is to swap off on d2 uh, with the bishop. But this way, I've kept my bishop on the board, and to me, it, it looks like pretty good piece that bishop. So it's it's maybe a more interesting way of uh, playing. Can't he just play e4? Well, the thing is, if I'd have gone if I'd have gone bishop here, and he plays e4, then my other bishop is safe. So maybe he can just play that. You you, you could be right. Um, maybe he has to play that. Um, I can always go bishop g6. Okay, so he's gone queen c2. So he's stopping my bishop coming here. But now he's really asking for Harry. Harry. Oh, can I resist it? Does the Pope have a balcony? Yes, he does. Can I resist it? This is what I want to do, yeah? I mean, can I resist that? Very sensibly, I can castle, but... No, we want to. We we, we re okay. Come on, let's do it. Let's push Harry. Let's do it. This is, this has got to be correct. You give me a chance to push the H pawn, and I will, and I will. And the idea here is to embarrass the bishop uh, and to gain a little bit of space on uh, uh, the king side. We all know you can't resist. You're damn right, space man. There's certain things in life are just very bad at resisting and pushing my age pawn is, is certainly one of them. It's certainly something I... I okay, so he's made his, his bishop an escape square. Very sensible. So I feel like I'll push it again. Why not? Let's, let's do that. We have to, you know, we're pushing him a little bit back. And then, uh, the, you know, he's still got a bit of a space advantage. This is still a fine position for my opponent. Um, I will have to look at this opening again afterwards. Um, I kind of feel like I might even want to swap bishops off here. Am I worried about f4? Bishop here, f4. Bishop here, e4. It's quite interesting because he, he is, is... Okay, bishop e5. I kind of feel like I want to get rid of this bishop for some reason. Um... I've also got moves like a5 to try to use this bishop because the one thing I, I'm thinking about um, is that knight e4 is coming, yeah? And then he's going to try to take my bishop anyway. But I don't feel I can really do much about that move. So I will... Uh, okay, bishop, here's what I want to play. So let's try and make that work. I'm losing a lot of time. f4... Bishop f6, e4. And do I want to tempt his pawns forwards or not? That That is the question, really. Uh, I don't think it helps me to do that. So I'm going to castle. Okay, let's castle. Let's castle first. Let's do this. This is probably the correct way to do it. Now, we can go knight to e4. And, tr and, and not try, but win the bishop pair. So this whole manoeuvring that I've done has been very interesting, quite an interesting opening. I hope you, I hope you will agree. Um, so Spain Alpha is saying the gambit pawn is always one back. There's only one line in Spain Alpha where it, in actual fact, you don't gain the pawn back. And I'll very quickly just show you after this game, I'll show you, I'll give you a 10 minute lesson on, on the Budapest. Uh, maybe I'll do a separate YouTube uh, lesson on the Budapest gambit for any of you of interesting. Uh, okay, so he's castled. Okay, fair enough. So now, I'm kind of thinking also, I'd like to push my pawn up. I want to create some counterplay, you see, in, in, in this position. Uh, but rook e8 does stop his knight coming here for now. That, that, that seems very logical. Bishop here, I want to get rid of these bishops, it feels. I don't know why, but I feel like my bishop is like biting on empty air. And if I get rid of this bishop, my queen can come to g5 and I can start an attack. So, but bishop here, I'm just worried about his bishop going to this square. Uh, sorry, his pawn, pawn f4. Then bishop back, then pawn here. And I do have check and f5 then. And then if it, yeah, okay, this is starting to look very interesting. Uh, but it's quite weakening for me as well. So I'm going to play rook e8 first because I don't want to allow his knight to come take my bishop. And the only reason I was slightly uh, sceptical about moving my rook away from that square 
is that if I play f5 later on, which I kind of might want to play, I might want to get my pawn at some point to f4, because that's a way to start an attack. I don't want my rook here. You want your rook behind the pawns you're pushing in general. Obviously, that's not the case with this pawn. Um, but I think this is an okay thing. It can't be a bad move, putting a rook on a half open line. It's got to be okay. And I've got to work out where to put this bishop and what I'm doing on some of the other areas of the board. So he can... And a typical idea for, for white in these positions is to go c5 to try to create you know use his pawn his pawn sort of mass over there but in this position i think if he goes c5 i can just go d5 and it feels like i've made a bit of progress there so what am i thinking about doing next well i've got a couple of ideas and you should always be thinking even when it's your opponent's move you should be knowing what plans you're doing one idea like i mentioned is to go a5 because my rook is not doing anything and if i get a chance to go there and take there my rook gets on an open line and that combined with my bishop here could be quite nice and if he ever plays b5 that would be positionally quite bad for him because i put my pawn on this square so if you can imagine these are where my pawns are this is where his pawn is why is that bad for him because his pawns become very rigid then he doesn't have any pawn breaks they're all quite rigid and they will be targets in any ending so this is a very sensible move to play a5 now, I'm not sure where this bishop goes at the moment. I can't move it anywhere very good. I mean, some some something's telling me maybe B, B7. Okay, so he's gone here to try to stop some of those lines. And now I'm certainly thinking this is the way to play. I feel, even though I said this bishop's quite good, I've got a little bit of congestion here. These pieces are kind of getting in the way. You know, I want to have the option of moving my queen over here. I could move my knight to this square. But then he might go bishop e4 and my knight might get kicked away with f4. Um, and, you know, I'm getting pushed backwards then. Knight here looks like a good move, but what are you doing after he just moves his bishop? It hasn't got anywhere to go. It's a superficial move, it feels like. So I'm going to play bishop here and get rid of a defender of his king and give myself a little bit more space. And also, now I can still play this f5 move. And I can get my queen to g5, which would threaten things like bishop takes h3. So this seems like a logical idea. How do you get a blue square? Well, it's only it's only a, a, a skill they give to grandmasters, I'm afraid, on chess.com. Only grandmasters can get a blue square. Look at that. Lovely. It's a special treat. No, you just press alt and right click as simple as that alt and right click if you right click without pressing anything it is it's a red square so uh yeah that's how you do it nothing to do with grandmasters <laughs> don't believe everything i say except unless it's chess related unless it's chess related um so th then you can then it's all right uh hikaru will be so jealous I don't think does he can't really get jealous he doesn't strike he doesn't strike me as a kind of chap who gets jealous see now I want my rook on this square this is what I was saying yeah because I can go f5 but he stopped that so he's played he's played it he's played it well now uh this knight is a little bit annoying I can just retreat it but he's got this pawn coming so I'm going to get rid of this bishop first and I can play f5 anyway I think because if he goes bishop takes I go queen here check so I'm thinking f5 is a move I want to play because it gives me control of some more squares. And often, if he goes check, I move my king, and then he goes queen here trying to mate me out of nowhere. I could, I can always go, oh, I don't know. That's a little bit funny. Okay, I think I can defend against that. Well, I hope I can because I'm going to play it anyway. I'm going to play it anyway. I'm going to play it anyway. So sometimes when you want to get a positional idea in, you can use little tactics to get your positional idea in. Now, I'm a, I don't know if that, I know. I'm kind of thinking F5 is the most aggressive approach. Um, but I don't know if it's the best approach. I could have just moved my knight there, gone very solid, and just built up the position a bit slowly. It looks about even to me, uh, this position. Um, after this check now... I'm thinking I go king here, then he goes queen here, and he suddenly threatens checkmate out of the blue. 
But I think I can defend against that by going queen here, covering that square. And then if he attacks my queen with something like f4 or knight to f3. Oh, no, no, don't do that. Oh, bloody hell. Oh, I lost the game once before by pre-moving. I think my queen can come to h6. So the line I'm thinking is check, king here, queen here, queen here, covering this square. And then if he goes f4, maybe knight to f3 is better. My queen just comes back here and it guards my king. And I think my queen is okay over there. You know, it, it sort of it attacks this pawn, it's okay. So he's gone back to a more, a more sensible square. Now, I'd like to play knight to this square, but then maybe he can take it, yeah. Maybe he can take it. So this is what I said earlier about having my rook on this square here. And you know what I might do? I might just move it back now because things are clarified a little bit more. I'm not saying my rook e8 move was wrong in the first place, but now things are clarified. I think I want to put this rook here and this rook here, get these rooks on these files and slowly try to play f5, f4, which I can't do here because it loses my knight. I would like to play knight to e5, but then I don't have the e5 square for my queen, so he'll probably go bishop takes here. Running a little bit short of time, so I'm just going to go rook to this square with the idea of going knight to e5 on my next move. As well as doing that, I'm also intending just to go bishop d7 and then rook to e8. a5 I think is pretty pointless now, because even if I take here, and I get an open file, it's not where the action is. The action now, with my two pawns, which could weaken my position as well, is very much over on the king's side. It's normally where it is when I play. So we want to concentrate our pieces sort of on this area of the board. So really, I want to try to get my pieces on all over to this area. I don't want to worry about the other area of the board. We'll put all the pieces where the action is, and then hopefully something will uh, appear. Okay, so Martin's sense moving from his king away from any check. And I can now play knight to e5, which looks very sensible with maybe this move to come. And do I wanna do I wanna take his bishop? I don't know. Knight here, will he go f4 even? Takes, queen takes. I, I kind of feel I want to put my bishop here first and get this rook here. So in some cases, he might play f4. Is he actually going to e4? Is he actually going to play that next? No, I don't think so. Okay, so I'm going to develop this one sensibly because I feel like my rook is going to be nicely positioned on e8 here because it's, you know, I'm working against e4. I told you I want to put my pieces. This piece might be an exception at the moment, but later on, Hopefully it will give me some attacking chances. And later on, I'm also hoping maybe it can pop out here as well. Here is bad at the moment because f5 drops. But let's say after some sequence where the knights get exchanged, which is very possible. Because if he goes knight to f3, I'm going to go knight to this square. Then maybe he goes knight to d4. So I'm wondering if I should have gone knight to e5 last move. Maybe. Because I'm thinking knight here knight here and his knight finds a very nice square on, on here d4 but then i can take off his bishop queen takes and his knight's very nicely placed though then okay he's, he's found it he's played a very good move i think my last move was maybe slightly i don't know if it was good or bad i, I was kind of thinking i wanted to put the knight here but another thing i can do here is go knight to e5 now if he takes i might even take my pawn and if he goes knight here, maybe I play f4. And that gets really exciting. You remember I, I told you earlier on, it's, you, you can probably see the way I'm thinking that some of the ideas I mentioned like 10, 15 moves ago, I'm using now. And this is what you've got to do when you play chess. When you're playing an opening, you should know what ideas you're trying to do. And I did mention about getting my pawn to f4, f4 even before it had any chance of moving. And this is how you get better at middle game positions. When you're playing an opening, Try to understand what kind of things you want to do in the middle game, the middle part of the game. It's very, very important. So this is what I might do. If he goes knight d4 with pressure on my pawn, I might play f4. Why am I going to do that? Because my knight will not be attacked by f4 anymore. I really like my knight on this square, so I don't want him to kick it away with this move. I want to get my rook in the game. I want to get my bishop in the game. And I want to use my f pawn to open up my opponent's king as well. I'm not so worried about opening this diagonal 
because that is generally only dangerous when the queen is on the other side of the bishop. If you watched some of Fiona's games, then you will you will know that. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, someone saying Hikaru likes to draw arrows. He does. I've seen one of some of his streams where he's drawn arrows. He's like, we put the bishop here, we attack the king, we bring the rook over here. The queen is going to come up here. The f pawn's coming. The knight's coming in. Maybe we bring the rook to g six. Ah, oh, ah, oh, he's okay. We're not. Gonna, that, there's the end of the arrows. Okay, so now, now I have a, a, a positional. Whenever you have a positional transformation, you need to work out what one works better for your position. Do I take with a pawn or do I take the queen? What do you guys think positionally? Now, I'm pretty sure that the decision I'm going to make is the the better one. Queen takes with f5 i'm not sure about this pawn is not so good and this pawn can remember i said c5 he gets a target to attack i think in these positions like a dutch defense taken with the pawn is much better because I, then i get two pawns that are sort of next to each other and they're controlling all of these squares okay so martin's playing a good move he's getting this diagonal for his pieces and he's using he's using this area of the board as well so this is this is a good move and I'm even thinking here, I can still play this move uh, as well. But do I, you know, can I play this and this first? Or a very clever move, I feel, because this diagonal is always going to be open towards my king. So I feel like a very clever move is to first play king here. It's better to wait a little bit, wait to see how things go. Because I wasn't sure which one of these to push. And he's going to check me anyway, yeah? He will check me at some point when I go e4. It's check. So I'm going to gain a tempo for later on. So um, f4 kind of seems like the way to start an attack. Try to get this pawn to f3. But I can also move this pawn first and then move that pawn. So these have a lot of potential. But the position I'd imagine is still pretty even because he has this queen side pawn mass. And he can certainly start using it. Something like b5, c6. These are very logical moves very very logical moves okay so he's moving his rook around on the open file can't be a bad move now i must play f4 I, okay so he's going to put his bishop on that square there. that's a very good defensive square uh, and now if i go queen here my bishop's kind of not on the best of squares here you know do i go here and here kind of like he's getting a lot of play then so if I go queen here, this pawn becomes a bit weak. don't know the way to play this. I don't want his bishop to get to e4. This, I've just realised this square is a very good defensive and, and attacking square. I don't like that. So I'm now thinking about queen here. And I'm just making sure his bishop has no good squares to go to. Queen here. And I'm getting short time here. Queen here. Would the idea maybe put my bishop on c6 and threatening checkmate? I'm going to go for it. I hope I haven't blundered here. When I say blundered, I'm just thinking if this bishop wasn't there, he would win a piece. But I can't see any good squares this bishop can go to. Well, I mean, he's got some okay squares, but I have time to move my bishop. Maybe this and this is the best idea. So if he goes bishop c4, I go bishop c6, he goes bishop d5. Because he can get a lot of counterplay on the d file. But what I'm trying to do at the same time, I don't want to go here because I don't want to give him the e4 square. Great defense. My idea now is maybe to go here because my queen is much more aggressively placed. I'm threatening bishop takes h3. So I have a threat after f4. f3 and bishop takes h3. I'm also threatening bishop c6. Okay, so he's stopping that over there. There's no doubt what I'm going to play here whatsoever because he's getting a lot of play on this area of the board. I need to be quick. I need to play f4. I need to play this move. I, I, there's no point thinking about that. And this creates one threat, like I said, f3 is a threat. And now he's moved his rook away from here. f2 might be weak and e3 might be weak. So it's getting quite critical um, on uh, this area of the board. Had he gone bishop a6, as someone recommended, I would have gone bishop c6. And bishop c6 would have defended and threatened. Every, it's 15 plus 10, so we're quite short time, but it's not the end of the world, this time limit okay so do i take the pawn or the rook this is a very hard decision to make pawn takes and f3 looks like the way to go 
But Rook takes and Rook F8. That looks very tempting as well. Yeah, get all the pieces into the game. Very tempted with that one. Okay, Rook takes. King here. I've got a tactic. Rook here. Rook D2 or here. Bishop takes H3. Pawn takes. Okay, I'm going to go Rook takes, but I don't know if this is correct. But I can see a little tactic. My tactic involves Rook here. Bishop takes here, rook takes here, and queen to g3 check in some possible line. Now, pawn takes was very tempting, maybe better, but I, I haven't got much time. If he goes bishop e4 now, I will play bishop takes h3. So this is why I brought the queen to g5 first. The reason I brought the queen to g5, because I do seem to have a threat, which is bishop takes here. The line I'm trying to calculate is king h2, because that avoids this bishop move. I will then play after king h2, rook to f8, threatening this pawn. He then should defend this pawn, well he shouldn't, with one of these two moves. And then I have a tactic, well I'm going to bring this in quickly, because I create an immediate threat. If his king was on h2, I forgot about this move, I would have had a nice tactic there, bishop takes h3, and then I'd have rook takes f2. But now I don't have this tactic. But still, I think I have a lot of pieces in the right squares. Can he defend though? Can he defend? Now, another tactic I have here is bishop takes here and rook to f3. But then he has bishop to f1 defending. So this looks very dangerous for him, but if he defends, he's okay. So now I can go e4, bishop takes, rook takes, but my bishop's always bad here. Now, this is what I want to play. Bishop takes, pawn takes, rook f3, bishop to f1. And in that position... Uh, I can't see any tactical possibilities. So I can play a positional move like rook d4, but I, I don't I don't really want to play something like that. I'm going to play, this is where I could really do a bit more time, but I'm just going to play for now this one because my bishop was always getting in some trouble with the rook captures and with c6. And you can see that my time is getting low. Thank you for the shout out, Son Jia Lang. Um, my time is getting very low and I have to make some moves. So the other idea is I am trying to improve my pieces because if my bishop gets the d5, I'm happy. And I want to step out of the way of c6. If c6, I can always block it with b6. Um, but maybe I had a better move there. Like rook d4 seemed like a good positional move, trying to stop his bishop from moving. Um, if he moves his bishop now, I can come bishop f5. So it's quite hard for him to move here as well. It's quite hard for him to move. If he goes f3, I can come into g3. So I have a very good attacking position here. Very nice attacking position. I mean, if you look at all my pieces, my pieces are going quite harmoniously. We're playing 15 minutes plus 10 seconds of move. So we, we have a bit of time. I say that, I don't have much time. My moves are gonna to have to be pretty instantaneous, but I get an extra 10 seconds every move. Okay, so I thought now this would be good. This is this is the idea. And the thing in that position, sometimes you can let your opponent hang himself. And that was kind of one thing I was doing there. Because now if bishop here, I go e4, e3. And I think this move may well just be winning. But it was very hard for um, Martin to, to find a move there. Because if he doesn't move the bishop, what's he do? It was very hard. And I was threatening bishop here, threatening checkmate. So maybe his position was actually incredibly hard, but I feel now, I feel now that this is, is very wrong. 31 moves. I'm going to give you a little lesson in, a little lesson in the opening afterwards. Uh, I mean, I'm still going to concentrate here, but I think with E3 coming, um, this position is, is, is very bad. He, can he defend this? So bishop here, E3, if he takes, 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 takes. The game goes on actually. It's actually equal. Is it equal material? Oh, it's not so bad for him. So, um, so the line I'm looking at is bishop here, and then I play e3, and then he plays pawn takes e3. Ah, ah and he's attacking my rook. So bishop here e3, and it's not all over. Maybe pawn takes e3, bishop takes queen, pawn takes f4. And if I go queen takes f4, rook takes c2, and it's not. He's got a rook and a bishop for the queen. Obviously, the queen is better there, but it's not. 
it's not like you know all over as i thought this was just winning i thought this was just winning so bishop here e3 pawn takes here if i go rook takes bishop okay i'm gonna have to play this anyway so we go here and he has to play pawn takes pawn otherwise he's just losing okay well this this is this is 100 percent losing for him now he, he had one last chance there and now well rook takes f2 i don't even need to take this rook i might instead just bring my pieces in like bishop e4 and threaten checkmate do i even have bishop takes h3 queen to h2 checkmate um this position is probably best i don't even take the rook it's it's completely over but we'll have a okay so has he got any threats well bishop e4 looks like the the best way to do this rook takes here rook takes f1 queen takes g2 we will play that i don't even want to take his rook my bishop is much stronger and there's no way he can defend against this threat and this threat in this position i also have ideas of coming like this as well because his g pawn is is actually pinned in the position so yeah he has to resign there Whoa, okay the budapest well first of all thank you very much to martin uh for the game there um so thank you martin let's all let's all give martin a, a mini round of applause cheers martin sir thank you very much for the game and uh it was it was a very interesting it was a very interesting game i'm gonna put it on the computer analysis now uh, and what i will do next we'll have a very quick look at the game i've got a couple of things i'd like to mention maybe not so much uh, and then i'll just give you a quick 10 minute lesson on the budapest not gonna you know there's only so much i can do in 10 minutes and later on i'll do a, a like youtube lesson on the budapest i'm gonna put this video up on youtube as well so we will have this up on youtube so you can watch this game one of my first ever games in the budapest but i've done quite a lot of research on it i've got uh, i've got a dvd coming out on what i found on it and you can see it was a very interesting game so but thank you uh, martin played well there he just got in a little bit of trouble at the end uh, but generally it was quite a tough game for martin because you know i had the, all these ideas and i knew the opening quite well so let's have a look then so okay so we're going to put it on the computer um and we'll see what what's going to be my uh what does everyone think is going to be my accuracy rate there I, i'm pretty sure i made some mistakes uh well of course i made some mistakes what a stupid question uh let's have a look um what the computer is saying oh that's not bad that's not bad look at my accuracy rate that's and martin's accuracy rate is actually pretty good okay i'm just going to move do a little bit of juggling about here so what do you think my accuracy rate is guys i'm going to move my head over here what is my accuracy rate is anyone going i'm just moving the screen around so we can see what the screen is and okay you can't see my accuracy rate like that night okay I'll, I'll do this again okay let's not delete the wrong thing oh i always do that that is so annoying i always remove my video for some reason it doesn't like my my face i wonder why that is <laughs> uh cpu usage um detected too high okay well there you go too high cpu apparently is that, that, that's maybe what the problem is with uh, the computer uh, computer analysis but i don't believe that okay i'm gonna put me i'm gonna put me all the way over here hello so we can try to fit the board on okay let's do that and we're gonna try to now readjust the board so we can see it and i'm quite happy with the way i played that after my blitz session yesterday which was rather tragic okay my face is gone we'll make it we'll make it doable like that shall we okay let's make it doable like that and no we're gonna do this okay so 97.7 accuracy that's pretty all right yeah that's pretty all right but i know this opening well so we're gonna have a very good quick look at it now and we're just gonna see um and i'll give you a little lesson on what i know about the opening afterwards so um uh basically this is the budapest this line here and i'm going to talk about the opening afterwards i'm just going to spend five minutes talking about the game first martin i think played the best move in my opinion bishop to f4 i'll talk about the other moves later on this move will generally win the pawn back bishop b4 check it is the old main line but i think the best move now for white is knight to c3 this is the move which i think is best because the point now is if i go queen to e7 trying to win this pawn back then white plays queen to d5 and and, and basically white holds on 
to the pawn on e5 so this is this is this is like the the okay it says queen d5 is an inaccuracy this is like mainline theory computer so I, I don't know what the computer is thinking about saying that that is just wrong uh the computer is wrong there don't listen to it but knight bd2 used to be considered the safe way to play against budapest and a way that white could get an advantage um uh yeah, I mean this is this is the sharp way, and I think it was a wise choice. As Martin says, it's a it's a sensible way to play. Now, uh, in this line, Queen e7 gets my pawn back, and now what White's idea is, White tries to get a small advantage by trying to force this exchange at some point. But first of all, I take on e5, and the little trick here at some point is that you can't go pawn takes bishop. This has occurred, believe it or not, in many games because of this one and this is look at that isn't that a nice checkmate that's such a beautiful little checkmate there yeah lovely little lovely little checkmate there so white has to play e3 which is uh excellent well okay it's, it's certainly and now the main move is bishop takes d2 my, my opinion of this position is um that after d6 um it's probably about even but maybe white is slightly slightly better with two bishops but i think there was an old game i saw of spielman's where spielman played b6 and bishop b7 which i thought was very interesting so if i was going to play this again in my dvd i discussed this move let's say castling and then this move and i find this bishop very dangerous and after something let's say like b4 even this move uh, which we saw in the game and in my DVD, again, I give the move h5. And the point here is I'm actually casting queenside. And, th and this can lead to very exciting play with my pawns running up the board. So this is another way to play. But the way I played in the game is, a, is an idea given by Timothy Taylor in, his, in one of his books, well, on, on the Budapest Gambit. And it's given as dubious here, but I don't know. I don't know if that's true or not. It's very interesting because we don't want to give up the bishop pair and the point of this move is you go bishop d4 and what a fun move to play this is a very fun way to play the budapest you can't take this one because now i have two checkmates look at those imagine if you got a checkmate like that in a game how much would you enjoy that that's a jolly good valentine gift so he has to move the rook and now the question is i play d6 and i think that's okay again the bishop is the bishop is poisoned it's actually poisoned um yes bishop takes d2 is the main move martin i don't think nearly anyone's played this idea of bishop c5 martin it's quite a new idea but i think it's very interesting with a computer if you look at it now it only gives it a very small advantage what did it say white should play it says rook c1 is best well maybe yeah rook c1 might be best maybe i could have played bishop f5 maybe this is a slight mistake because my bishop does go here so i think in actual fact the key thing here is this is what i played and it says it's best but can i go bishop f5 now i i, I smelt a little rat here i suppose you can always go rook b3 even which i didn't even i wish i didn't even consider um this move rook b3 okay i think oh, it says it says now this is an excellent move <laughs> hang a minute look at that that doesn't make much sense bishop f5 is excellent but knight g6 is best i'm confused i'm confused what do i play oh you just go rook b3 i think rook b3 is just best here because you cover all the squares i don't have knight coming here this is okay for you why do i want to put the bishop here so this is i think knight g6 is okay bishop g3 looks correct and now i have to move my bishop now maybe i should have gone here straight away i think this might be the way to go because I feel that the exchange of bishops probably does help me. Because my bishop isn't... I think your bishop is a better defensive piece. I'm never going to checkmate you with your bishop defending your king like this. So this was maybe something I'd do in the future. But okay, bishop f6 is, is not, not a, a terrible move either. And now queen c2 is best. And now this was very interesting. Okay, well, look at that. The computer says, Harry, Harry. The computer is shouting Harry. And it gets very interesting. And I think the key moment, uh, I'm not really sure where Martin went wrong. We'll have a look. So uh, this looks okay. 
Ah, so maybe b6 was another option and just get the bishop here. Okay. No, I wasn't sure about moving the rook here. And now let's have a look where Martin went wrong though, because this all looks very normal. It still thinks white is slightly better here. But I don't know I don't know how true that is. Because now after f5, it's quite interesting. And now it says white is a lot better. I think this is where Martin made the mistake. I think probably the check is key. Let's have a look. Yes, this is the mistake. And I think after the bishop goes a bit passive, Martin, I think you went a little bit passive here. Um, that this uh, this might be where it starts to go wrong. So let's have a look. How bad is this position? So I was gonna. I wanted to go to this square. I wanted to play here, and now it says it says I'm nearly losing here. Can you believe that? Is the position that bad? And if Queen D1, I was gonna go Queen G5 as I discussed. Oh, look how it's getting worse. It's getting worse. King H6 was best. Let's have a look at this. And now knight here. Oh, this is bad. This is so Martin actually played very well, but as in most games of chess, you miss one chance and you might lose the game at, at a good level. And this is very strong with a knight coming here. I can see this. This is prob this is losing for me. This is what I would have played. I would have lost. So this is horrible, yeah. The knight comes in here, it comes in here. Ugh. So it's just that one move. Um, yeah, I, I suppose I suppose I can play this better, Martin. Maybe I can go king f8 and then go c6. But I, sp I mean, this way you have at least misplaced my king somewhat. And the computer actually now says b5 to stop me getting rid of your bishop. So it's a little bit it's a little bit more scary for me anyway. And I think if you can give your opponent as many problems in the game as you can, that's what you should do. And at least with this check, you would have put me in a little bit of a dilemma. I'm probably okay if I go this way, but if I go the other way, actually, I get in a lot of trouble. So it's kind of, kind of, you know, I have to be careful. Anyway, let's go to the game. So bishop d3, and now the rook just comes back. Sensible move. King g1, I developed my last piece. Knight e5, I thought was a better move. It was a better move. And now after this move here, this is starting, I think, to be okay for me. Now, it still thinks Martin's better. My idea of knight d4 was f4. And this actually looks... I mean, the computer says it's equal, but I don't believe that. I think with the queen coming to g5, the pawn coming to f3, black is doing very well here. Two humans play this position. If of equal strength, the player of black will win most of the time. This is a very dangerous position. So knight takes d4 was uh, knight takes e5 is okay, pawn takes is okay. Martin's playing all right, c5 playing good move, just miss he's played only one slightly bad move. I get my king out of the checks, okay. Now this move may have been unnecessary, and every little loss of tempo is a problematic. This move getting on with it, as the computer says, still apparently gives Martin the advantage. I'm not so sure if I believe that because I have initiative have long-term pressure but this move is is much better um okay so let's have a look so instead uh we'll just finish the game off i go queen g5 now and it's starting to get quite scary after this one uh now was rook, ta rook takes us best my idea here martin played king to h1 i was hoping for this one when i think i'm winning with this and then rook here and now I play bishop takes h3. This is my idea. I wanted to play rook takes f2, but after rook takes, queen takes, you can go here. And now the rook is defended by the king. So what I was thinking during the game is that if I play bishop takes h3, and now if you play here, I can play here now. You play here, and now I play here. You play here, I play here, and I'm checkmating next move. So that's, that's why that was. And we just see where Martin made the last mistake. Okay, so Queen D2 is better, and it's and this was the final mistake now. And after this one, after this one, it, it, it it's pretty much game over. But this position to me already looks very hard to play for White. It's very hard. You have to defend this. You can't move the bishop. You also have to watch out for E5, E4. You have to watch out for the bishop coming to D5 with checkmate ideas. Okay, well, thank you for the game, Martin. It, it was actually a, quite a high standard game. I think Martin played very well. So, so, so well done to Martin um, as well. And I'm just gonna now very quickly 
show you a couple of lines just to finish off this stream in the Budapest, um, a very short five, 10 minute lesson. We're not gonna do much more than that because I've got things that need to be done tonight. Getting some sushi soon. I've got drive and get it. So we need to, we need to, you know. Uh, okay, so basically now, the one problem with the Budapest really is that if white doesn't play c4 you can't play the Budapest so you can only do it against c4 which I believe is the most popular move but there's many other moves you know the Jabava London system they can play knight to f3 they can play the London system they can play the Trompovsky you know it's quite confusing it's not a universal weapon but if they do play uh, c4 it's a very fun weapon now in this position, white has to take the pawn. Otherwise, otherwise in this position, black is just fine. And after this move, this is the main line. There's two other lines, which I'll just quickly mention. Um, now knight to h3 is being recommended. That's the third line. Well, I'll talk about the second. This is the old main line. But the problem with this, and I think black is doing very well actually in these lines. I say very well, I'm very happy with this is that we now move the bishop to c5. Why do we do this? Because we force the move e3, and now look at white's bishop. White's bishop is trapped in. And there are numerous lines here which go knight to c6, and you're gonna win this pawn back. Because like the game I had against Martin, if you do this, you can just go queen e7, you're gonna win this pawn back. So white has to give that pawn back, and at some point he does this, and you get this kind of thing with castles and now a very fun line here and a move worth remembering in these types of positions is a5 and the rook comes over to h6 the queen comes to h4 and we checkmate on h2 so for example b3 rook a6 white continues without watching what he's doing rook h6 and all of a sudden you know let's say knight to e4 queen h4 and if they ever go h3 i know here you can take the knight but a, a move which very often works is bishop takes h3 so this is something worth remembering with knight to f3 i don't think it's the best move because bishop c5 the other line is alakine's line with e4 this is very interesting and here there are a number of moves i recommend we just take the pawn white now goes f4 so you get your pawn back and here i think you should go knight g6 and bishop b4 and castles quickly and white has the better pawn structure but black has the better pieces so you can try to use your pieces to quickly get a rook to e8 and attack this pawn and this is very interesting but the line that martin played i think is the key line and that is bishop to f4 because now if i play bishop c5 e3 look how better the bishop is on this square the bishop is much better on this square because it's outside the pawn structure so that is why here, after bishop f4, I change plans. Knight c6, I now play bishop b4 check. And I think this line is okay for black. The only critical line is knight to c3. This is white's best line. The only line where white might try to get a little advantage. What do I think of g5 against bishop f4 in this position? I think g5 is just a very bad move, uh, to be honest. I know it's been played by a lot of players, um, Mamajarov, other players, but in general, this is just a bad move. It weakens the king too much. I've done my research. I've, I've checked these lines, all these lines with top computers. You can do the same. You can take my word for it, do your own, but you'll realize that this move is just a mistake. Thank you for the sub, uh, beam me up, Scotty. Very kind. So that's why here, here, and the only way to test the Budapest is knight c3 and to try to hold on to this pawn with queen d5. Now this position, I think black just about gets enough counterplay. And I think black's best line is to cause some pawn issues over here and now play f6. And we're threatening to win the pawn back. So white has to take it. And now we go knight takes f6, gaining a useful temple on the queen. The queen retreats and now we play d6. And we're a pawn down here, but white has very bad pawns. And there's only one way that I think white can try to have a uh, uh, an advantage here i don't think e3 is right because the bishop is crap on this square and there's an old game of oh my god i can't remember it was where black played knight e4 to c5 and this is well worth remembering even with a bishop coming here with knight g3 threat stuff like this but the best move here is g3 and this is the critical position there was a game ivanchuk versus uh, sorry aronian versus ivanchuk 
where in actual fact after bishop here um bishop g4 was played and black gets a lot of play in this line and black was actually better because of this knight to c5 idea but i, I think white has good chances for an advantage of the extra pawn a line which i recommend in my forthcoming dvd is also g6 here b6 here probably in this position i give b6 here because i think the bishop is very good here and it's nice to get control of this square with something like this and this now and i study this in some details i can't remember now off the top of my head the variations but i give this very exciting way to play white's a pawn up but white has horrible pawns and black has some open lines to play along but this is the way white should play and they're the main ones what do i okay one more line that someone did ask about i'll make that the last one is someone asked what about is it knight to h3 here let me just get my bearings no e3 this was very trendy that someone asked about and now you go knight takes here and knight to h3 and this was very popular this move in the 90s with the knight coming to d5 so if you play knight c6 white said okay i'm better here you know because if you do something like this my knight has very good control of this square i have a slight advantage but then it was fouled and i'll talk about this in the new coming dvd that after knight to h3 black has an amazing idea here and that is the pawn sack d5 as played by manjarov and this move aims to destroy uh the, the knights over there destroying the king side and if queen takes d5 of course we don't swap queens we play queen to f6 and let's say something like knight to f4 we can now play knight c6 threatening the knight here let's say the queen comes back we play bishop to f5 and now we have rook d8 coming knight d3 knight b4 look at that fantastic compensation g5's coming for one pawn so it's a lot of interesting stuff in the budapest so i hope you enjoyed that guys uh i do need to to go now uh just a little stream and i'll put that up on youtube if you want to re re-watch it to learn it again um and at some point i will do a more in-depth um youtube lesson on the budapest as i've done if you want to learn the black line the london system i've already got some lessons on my youtube channel but i'll put this up there and i'll try to get a youtube video done probably on sunday so thank you very much have a great night everyone whatever you're up to and um i'll be back soon and cheers cheers for now goodbye